Hello, welcome back to our general mathematics class for second quarter. And this is our lesson four for week two. Again, this is teacher Riza. Our learning competency for lesson four is solves problems involving simple and compound interest. So we're going to solve problems involving simple and compound interest with solutions. So in solving problems on simple interest, we're going to apply these formulas that we already discussed in our previous lesson. This is if simple interest is unknown, if principal is unknown, and if rate is unknown, and if time is unknown. Future value is unknown. If simple interest is unknown and future value and principal are given. And if principal is unknown and future value and simple interest are given. For example, how much interest is charged when 50,000 pesos is borrowed for 9 months at an annual interest rate of 10%. So what are given in the problems are principal, which is 50,000 pesos, and rate is 10%, or that is 0.10, and time is 9 months. Since the given for time is 9 months, we're going to convert this into year, because time should be in a year. Then dividing 9 over 12, that is equal to 0.75 year. Then using simple interest equal to PRT where in the principal is 50,000 and the rate is 0.10 and time is 9 over 12 and 9 over 12 is equal to 0 0.75 multiplied to 0 0.10 and 50,000 and that is equal now to 3,750 pesos. So therefore, the simple interest charge is 3,750 pesos. If an entrepreneur applies for a loan amounting to 500000 in a bank, the simple interest of which is 157500 for three years, what interest rate is being charged? So given we have principal is 500000 simple interest is 157500 and T is equal to 3, so we're to going to find is the rate. So using the formula in finding for the rate that is simple interest divided by principal times time, where in the simple interest given in the problem is 157,500 and principal is 500,000 times 3, which is the value of T. And that is equal now to 157,500 divided by 1,500,000 pesos is equal to 0.105 or 10.5%. So the interest rate being charged is 10.5% after 3 years. Then for compound interest, we can use these formulas. If compound interest is unknown, if future value is unknown, if present value is unknown, and if future is value, this is if it is compounding more than once a year. For example, how much money should a student place in a time deposit in a bank that pays 1.1% compounded annually so that she will have 200000 after 6 years? So given future value is 200000 rate is 1.1% or that is 0.011, and t is equal to 6 years. So what we're going to find is the present value. So we have now, using the formula p is equal to f over 1 plus r raised to t, where n the future value is 200,000 over 1 plus 0 0.011 raised to 6. And 1 
raised to 6 equal to 1.067.84184. Dividing 200 by 1.067.84184, that is equal to 187,293 pesos and 65 centavos. So therefore, the student should deposit 187,293 pesos and 65 centavos in the bank. So have 200,000 after 6 years. Then next problem. Suppose your father deposited in your bank account 10,000 at an annual interest rate of 2% compounded yearly. When you graduate from kindergarten and did not get the amount until you finished grade 12, how much will you have in your bank account after 12 years? So given principal is 10,000, rate is 2% or that is 0 0.02 and time is 12, then what we're going to find is the future value. And we're going to use F is equal to P times 1 plus R raised to T, where in the principal given is 10,000 and rate is 0 0.02 raised to T is 12. And 1.02 raised to 12 is equal to 1.268242. Multiply to 10,000, so we have 12,682 pesos and 42 centavos. So therefore, the money deposited in the bank after 12 years will be 12,682 pesos and 42 centavos. Another problem. On the seventh birthday of her daughter, Shirley deposited an amount in a bank peso bond fund that pays 3% interest compounded annually. How much should she deposit if she wants to have 100000 on her daughter's 18th birthday? So given we have future values 100000 rate is 3% or 0 0.03, then T is equal to 11. How do we get that 11? Since the money deposited on the 7th birthday and to be withdrawn on the 18th birthday. So we're going to subtract 7 from 18. So that's equal to 11. And we're looking for the present value or the principal to be deposited. So we're going to use P is equal to F over 1 plus R raised to T. Where in the future value is 100,000 and rate is 0 0.03 and T is equal to 11. And 1.03 raised to 11 is equal to 1.384234. 100,000 divided by 1.384234 is equal now to 72,242 pesos and 12 centavos. So therefore, Shirley should deposit 72,242 pesos and 12 centavos to get 100,000 on the 18th birthday of her daughter. And another problem, find the maturity value and interest if 15,000 is deposited in the bank at 3% compounded quarterly for 5 years. So what are given the problem? We have the principal which is 15,000, the annual rate which is 3% or 0 0.03, time is 5, and, and the conversion period is 4 since that is compounded quarterly. So we're going to use future values equal to P times 1 plus J raised to N because this is compounding more than once a year. So first we're going to solve for J that is the annual rate divided by the conversion period that is 0 0.03 divided by 4 is 0 0.0075 and for the value of N multiply the conversion period times time so that's 4 times 5 is equal to 20. So substituting now the principal which is 15,000 and the value of J which is 0 0.0075 and the value of N which is 20. And 1.0075 raised to 20 is equal to 1.161184 multiplied to 15,000. So we have 17,000 pesos for 17,417 pesos and 76 centavos. So the maturity value after 5 years will be 17,417 pesos and 76 centavos. And for your activity, for simple interest problem, you're going to answer the following problems by solving for the asked question. 
For number one is your mom deposited your earnings in a bank which amounted to 4,000. The bank offers an interest of 4.5 every year. How much your money will earn at the end of three years? For number two, you borrowed money from your classmates which amounted to 3,000. After two years, you paid your classmate an amount of 3,720. What is the rate of interest applies to your loan? And for number three, your father bought a car which is 200,000 worth. He borrowed half of it to a bank with an interest rate of 13%. When your father paid the amount, he borrowed it. It already amounted to 278000 How long is the duration of your father's loan? For activity 2, compound interest problem. For number 1, a principal amount of 2000 is placed in savings account at 3% per annum compounded annually. How much is in the account after 7 years? For number 2, if 3,000 is placed in an account at 5% and is compounded quarterly for 5 years. How much is in the account at the end of 5 years? For number 3, 1,200 is placed in an account at 4% compounded annually for 2 years. It is then withdrawn at the end of the 2 years and placed in another bank at the rate of 5% compounded annually for 4 years. What is the balance in the second account after the four years? And for your generalization, using the Venn diagram, we're going to illustrate the similarities, write the similarities on the intersection of the two circles at the middle, and write the differences of the two types of interest on their corresponding circle where in set A, which is the green, is for simple interest, and for set B, which is the yellow-green, is for compound interest. So before we end this lesson, let me share this quotation according to Warren. Life is a series of problem-solving opportunities. The problems you face will either defeat you or develop you depending on how you respond to them. And running away from any problem only increases the distance from the solution. The easiest way to escape from the problem is to solve it. And according to Travis Kalanick, every problem has a solution. You just have to be creative enough to find it. And just in case, when you find no solution to a problem, it's probably not a problem to be solved, rather a truth to be accepted. So again, this is Teacher Riza saying thank you for listening and always stay safe. Have a nice day. Thank you.